I have decided to change substrate in my African Cichlid display tank. I will be walking you through the process that I followed and explaining my decisions and application methods. While no one process is right for everyone, this is what worked best for me. The tank I'm working with is 150 gallons. I purchased this tank used about two months ago. The tank, stand, fish, substrate, etc. all came together from the previous owner. To ensure I retained as much beneficial bacteria, I kept the original substrate during the initial setup to ensure the fish would avoid as much stress as possible and prevent any ammonia spikes, which I successfully achieved with no fish loss. After watching videos of other cichlid tanks, I grew to love the look of a white sand bottom. Not only does it look great, cichlids thrive in a sandy bottom as it is easier for them to sift for uneaten food. I've selected Aqua Quartz Pool Filter Sand by Fairmount Sandral. I obtained 100 pounds of it through Amazon for only $50, which is more than 50% less than it would have cost me to purchase a specific aquarium sand from a fish store. Pool filter sand can be had for even cheaper, with some hardware stores selling a 50 pound bag for as little as $5. The reason I paid a little more for the aqua quartz variety was that many of the reviews on Amazon showed that many had used this for an aquarium substrate. Better yet, there were many pictures of it in aquascaped aquariums, which allowed me to get a good idea of how exactly the sand would look like once in an aquarium. With all sand substrates, they contain varying levels of dust and debris, and you will have to thoroughly rinse it before using it in an aquarium, or you'll end up with a cloudy mess on your hands for quite some time. The reviews on Amazon for this aqua quartz variety were very encouraging, as many indicated that rinsing the sand was a breeze, and there was very minimal dust with this product. I was happy to pay a little bit more knowing that this sand was going to fit my needs. One of the best ways to rinse the sand is to use a five gallon bucket and a hose. I've split one 50 pound bag between two buckets. I would not recommend filling each bucket more than halfway so that you have adequate space to mix the sand. It is also best if you can place the bucket on an angle so that the water overflows in a single direction. You can place something beneath the bucket to prop it up, or as I did, I used my driveway, which is on an angle. You want to rinse the sand until the water becomes crystal clear. This can take anywhere from 10 to 30 minutes per bucket. It is best to occasionally mix the sand so that you stir up the debris. As soon as you think you're done rinsing, rinse it some more. While this process takes a lot of time, you'll be saving yourself a headache in the future by not having a cloudy tank. I was surprised how clean this pool filter sand was. I rinsed each bucket for 30 minutes, but probably could have gotten away with rinsing for only half that amount of time. While I had tested the pH level in my tank in the past and found it to be at a sufficient level for African cichlids, I have never tested the pH level coming directly from my tap before it made it into the tank. The gravel substrate I was using in the past came from the previous owner of the tank so it was entirely possible there was crushed coral mixed in with the gravel. Since we are going to remove all of the gravel substrate and replace it with sand, it was important to test the pH level directly from the tap. After completing the test using the master test kit from API, I confirmed that the pH level from my tap was about at an 8.4 and nearly perfect for my cichlids, meaning no need to add crushed coral. Now, the easiest way to change substrate within an existing tank is to move the fish to another tank during this process. This way you can completely drain the tank and more easily remove 100% of the existing substrate. This also gives you a great opportunity to thoroughly clean the tank. Unfortunately, I had no other tanks to store these fish in to completely drain the tank. I had considered using the 55 gallon trash can that I used when transporting the fish from the original owner's home but when I got the fish into the tank after the transport, many fish had damaged fins and scales due to the close quarters within the trash can. So instead, I've decided to change the substrate while the fish are still in the tank. I began by turning off the sump and heater, just like I would do for any water change. I then removed all of the decor from the tank. 
This is a heavily stocked tank and these guys can create a lot of waste. So while removing the water, I wanted to give it a thorough gravel vacuuming. I drained the tank a little over halfway and then began the process of removing the gravel. One of the reasons that I started with this amount of water left in the tank was that the water will become quite cloudy once you begin to disturb the substrate. This will likely happen regardless of how clean you think it is. By having around half the water left in the tank, it allowed me to get to the substrate while also attempting to dilute the cloudiness as much as possible so that I could see what I was doing. This is a very deep tank at about 26 inches, which resulted in me having to perform this job while on a stepladder and reaching over and into the tank. This added an extra challenge to changing the substrate and would have been less of a hassle on a smaller tank. I used plastic cups to scoop the gravel and placed it into a larger container within the tank. When these got full, I would empty them into a larger bucket outside of the tank. This reduced the number of trips up and down the stepladder. I was careful while scooping the gravel to avoid fast motions as this would cloud the water even more. I corralled the fish to one side of the tank while I worked on the other. Eventually, I was working blind as the water became too cloudy to see what I was doing. Fortunately, this was not until near the end of this process. After about 90% of the gravel was removed, it was getting harder to get the last remaining pieces. I grabbed a fake plant and dragged it across the bottom of the tank, using it as a makeshift broom. While I couldn't see, I could still feel, and this was a pretty effective process. By now, the fish are surely becoming stressed. Their water is cloudy, the water level was low, and the temperature has dropped several degrees. It was now time to get warm water back into the tank. I filled the tank approximately three quarters of the way full before I added the new substrate. Even though I had already rinsed the sand, I did not want to potentially cloud the water further by pouring it in from the top. Slowly pouring in the sand near the bottom worked very well. I poured all the sand in the middle and worked with my hand and scrub brush to level it out th throughout the tank. With the sand added, it was time to fill the rest of the tank and get the sump and heater back on. The water was still a bit cloudy, but much better than it was during the removal of the gravel. The remaining cloudiness was not from the sand, but rather the detritus that was stirred up from the old substrate. There are chemicals on the market you can add to more quickly clear the water, but I prefer to let my filters do the work. Within a few hours, it had cleared considerably, and by morning, it was back to crystal clear water. When I was rinsing the sand in the five gallon buckets, it appeared very brown or tan. After getting it in the tank and under LED lighting, it was the off-white color I had seen in pictures from other reviews and was the exact color that I had hoped to achieve. The fish love it. They all immediately began sifting through the sand and seemed to enjoy moving it around to their liking, creating mounds and valleys throughout the tank. No fish were lost from stress, there was no fin nipping, and no ick. Three things I was worried might happen by attempting to conduct this process with all the fish remaining within the tank. Again, if you have the means, I would advise moving the fish to a temporary home so that you can complete these steps without the fish in the tank. But if that is not an option, this video is here to show that this can be done with the fish still in the tank. I couldn't be happier with the final product. All that remains is to purchase some new rock decor. What are your thoughts on this process? Have you ever changed substrate with the fish still in the tank? What was your experience? Please leave a comment and share your experience or feel free to ask me any questions. Hit like and subscribe if you found this video helpful and are interested in more content. Thanks for watching.